Soft five zero, you guys ready for control? We're ready. Go ahead and bump it. Okay, go ahead and bump it now. Okay, you've got it. Deck's going off comms. Copy. Oh, stations, uh, Captain, going off radio comms. Copy that. Um, Argus was not renamed at Atlanta. It's in a completely different ROV. <laughs> Argus is still uh, here with us. Yep, and we're going down to 2,000 meters for those who are watching. So um, not, not quite as deep as the previous dive, but still pretty far down. And how long will that take us about? A little under two hours? I think so. So we, it's 2,000 meters, and we mm -hmm. go down between 20 and 25 meters a yep. minute. <coughs> a little under, yep. Steven, can we get high pack on channel three? And Lynette, when you have a moment, do you mind zooming out so we can see the full dive track? Yeah, so we can see the full dive track, please. Thank you. So we are back in the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument now that the weather is uh, allowing us to do work here again. So today we're diving on Solidae Seamount and we're following, our plan is to follow up a ridge feature that is on the south, uh, sorry, on the west side of Solidae Seamount. It's a very steep ridge as you can see in the topography view, bathymetric view in uh, high pack on channel three or in the lower left hand corner of the quad view. So we'll be starting at waypoint one, WP1 in the southwest and working our way up to the northeast, ascending from about 2000 meters to about 1300 or so. Um, so this will be one of the longest dives we've, or this will be the yeah. uh, <laughs> planned uh, <laughs> Longest, longest traverse we've done so far, <laughs> about a little over three kilometers uh, distance that we're going to travel along those. But our objectives are still very similar to what we've been doing on previous dive, which mm -hmm. is to collect rock samples for understanding the origin of the seamount um, and to survey the animal diversity, see how it compares to what we've seen already on this expedition and what has been seen previously. Um, in the Papahanaumoa Kuakea at other sea mounts. Um, and then we'll be collecting water samples for uh, using that as another measure of diversity in this ecosystem. But we'll, this is planned to be a 22 hour dive. 
Longest one yet. Thanks, Lynette. You can set high pack however you like. Stephen, can we show our audience the lovely sunny view outside? And also, <laughs> so those of us inside can enjoy it. <laughs> I soaked up as much as I could before I came in. The I know. Bed. I had to get out on deck this afternoon, too, after <laughs> finishing up, up reports. Soaked up as much as I could. Yeah. It's laid out there. Yeah, yeah, we've had surprisingly cloudy and cool days I for know. the last several in a row. Gorgeous. Front row, we have a lot of ROV questions. If you guys are up for a couple, some that I definitely don't know the answer to. What's the colors on the arm for? Ooh, that is a good question. I don't know. You can see more. I wonder if it'll be more dense or less dense than what we saw on the last dive. With coral densities? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is an audio slate for dive H191. UTC time is 022838, mark. Are you guys on SPL at all? We kind of are. We're here. <coughs> I am. <laughs> Just a couple of ROV questions um, if you guys are up for a few when you're ready. Sure. Cool. Uh, someone's wondering about the colors on the arm. Um, are they pieces of tape? But the, I think it's like blue and red and That's green. a Steve question, actually. Oh. Yeah, those are colorful pieces of tape. Um, so the white tape when we see it is used to white balance our camera um, what that means is we give the camera a reference point for what white is um, different sources of light have different color temperatures for example this sunlight is rather blue mm -hmm. and a tungsten light bulb is rather orange so you have to tell the camera what light it's reading and you do that by white balancing the camera and then those red, green, and blue pieces of tape are there to just reference and confirm that everything looks correct. We know that should be RGB, red, green, blue, going from top to bottom. Nice. If one of them looks purple, then maybe we need to white balance again. Mm. That's so interesting. I yeah, I no didn't idea. know that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I don't think I would have guessed that. <laughs> Learning all kinds of facts here. I know. Is that something Every that day. people should do with their own <laughs> cameras? Um, I mean, mo a lot of cameras have auto white balance. Um, and 
you, uh, if you shoot in manual mode, you can, you get to select your white balance. Um, if you have a DSLR, you can look at it in, in your white balance settings, or WB it might look on the camera. Um, you'll see sometimes an icon for the sun, um, or an icon for a light bulb, or an icon for shade. Each of those environments tends to have a different color temperature. Um, and you can also dial it in. A tungsten light bulb is about 3200 Kelvin. Uh, daylight is about 5600 Kelvin. What do we calibrate for? We, I don't know what reading we get, but what we do is we use the tape to say this is white. And sure, that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Th and what color, you don't know what color it latches on to? I just heard uh, somebody say 5400, maybe, okay. is what we, what we get. It's probably cool. the color temperature of our lights. Cool. Yeah. The sun's 52? 56. Okay. Is, yeah. Different cameras will say different things for sunlight, but right. it's on that, that end of the spectrum. Cool. Now that I recall, I do think I've seen someone put a piece of like white paper in front of a camera like a couple of times. Like yep. they, they keep moving it. So maybe yep. that's what that was. <laughs> exactly. It, and doing something like that is, can be helpful if you're shooting and you have mixed light sources. So say you have sunlight coming oh, in from a window yep. and you have yep, it was in the house. <laughs> a light coming from a lamp. Yep. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. I was always wondering what that was. But if you see, if you shoot on a camera that shoots raw, like .raw files or .awr, um, those, just read the, f those images have the full spectrum, or they read the full spectrum, and mm -hmm. then in post-production, when you're editing your photos, you can change it to whatever you want. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right, hopping over to a question about Ad Atlanta. Somebody's wondering, uh, does Ad Atlanta's smaller size and lower mass significantly reduce the tow cable tension? Hmm. Significantly reduce the cable tension? Mm -hmm. That's what they're asking. Yeah, I'd say so. It's about a thousand pounds less, so it's a thousand pounds less cable tension. Yeah. And we plan to use Ed Atlanta for the entirety right. of the expedition, correct? Or will we be switching back to Argus at any point? Yeah, we'll switch back to Argus probably within this season, possibly. Um, depends on how we do all of our repairs. Mm -hmm. We might end up prioritizing Ed Atlanta. Not totally sure yet. Cool. Are there any disadvantages to using Atalanta? I think I got it. It was over here next to me. Yeah, there are some disadvantages to using Atalanta. Uh, what are they? <laughs> well, we can't fit the Zeus Plus camera on Atalanta, so it must be Mini Zeus on that vehicle, which doesn't give us quite as good of an image quality. What else? Uh, we don't have a sub-bottom profiler on Atlanta. That's, that's most of it, I think. Other than that, they were meant to be pretty close clones of each other. There's a few less cameras on Atlanta as well. Mm. Mm. That's right, yeah. The, what, there's no camera that looks directly down on its own, right? Gotcha. That's correct, yeah. That's a huge help, that camera, yeah. uh, for monitoring our navigation location, blah, blah, blah. It's super helpful, but we're learning to live without. Make do with less, they say. <laughs> Still been capturing some pretty good uh, views of Hercules. We've got a pr couple of pretty good uh, photos when I was flipping through earlier from uh, the last dive. Yeah. Yeah, on Argus and, well, on Atalanta, we have a, I think it was new in 2019, side scan, low frequency, long range. We had one on Argus until we retired it in, on Shakedown, actually, in favor of the new Atalanta one. But it's still functioning spare. It's in the, in the C-CAN, uh, sitting at the UH dock. 
Lynette, I don't think you're on SPO. It's all right. The question was, do we have a side scan on either vehicle? That was Jeopardy. We yeah, that was first. a very <laughs> nice Jeopardy <laughs> way to do that. <laughs> Oh, that's a good. So for first time Nautilus Corps of Exploration members, what is the most surprising part about ocean exploration for you? And for returning members, what is the most unique about this cruise compared to other ones that you've been on? Oh, man, are we going to go around the room? Yeah. <gasps> yeah, maybe start with the folks. So this is their new first one. Hmm. So, oh, goodness, three of us <laughs> are on the back row. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question again? What, what was the surprising thing about the ship? Uh, yeah, so it's uh, for first timers, what's the most oh. surprising part about ocean exploration for you? And for returning folks, what's most unique about this cruise compared to other ones? Huh, okay. What is I guess I'm thinking. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm yeah, Diane. I am a science manager in training. And uh, I think, of course, I knew about all the media and the presence here. that we have and, and, you know, sending this out to uh, groups all over the world. Um, but one of the surprising things is all of the folks who actually do tune in. I'm really surprised <laughs> at how many people are supporting us. Um, how many scientists ashore tune in and send us great information, um, help us with IDs, help us locate particular samples. Um, yeah, so I think that is a surprise to me, how much of a presence that we have. And thank you, viewers. Thank you, scientists ashore. Maybe we should say that one of those things, uh, one reason that's ex surprising to you is because you've spent a lot of time on other vessels. I do, right? I do. I've uh, spent 12 years working as a lab technician, um, AKA sort of science manager on other ships that um, travel to the Antarctic um, and other places, the Arctic as well. And um, yeah, we don't have that uh, on those other ships. We don't have this presence at all. Um, so it's really unique to OET. And I think it's really unique um, thing to engage the community. And that's one of the things that actually drew me to the program is uh, some of the science that I've experienced, you know, I feel like doesn't get out to the world. And this is a really neat way for, for mm -hmm. people to see and understand and um, yeah, experience all of this that we get to see. So yeah. did I answer the question? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shelby. Uh, oh All right. Goodness. I guess I'll go next. So I've been on one transit, but this is my first like expedition. Um, um, uh, what was surprising to me? Let's see. Um, oh, I don't think I, um, I guess more for sort of where Steven is sitting. I don't think I've ever really seen this much <laughs> computers and yeah. Just all of this together and sort of realizing mm -hmm. just how much it takes to run all the communications um, on the ship. Um, I don't think I've ever really seen it all together. Um, it was a little overwhelming when I first got on the first got on the ship and I was almost like I didn't want to touch anything because I was yeah. like, the minute I breathe on it, it's going to like die. I know. And I was <laughs> afraid to push buttons I was myself. afraid to like touch things. And yeah. so... But it's also surprising at how quickly you get used to things. And so now it's like, click, click, beep, boop. Yep. <laughs> you got it. Like, really, really, really quickly. Um, so, yeah, that was a sort of cool and surprising thing for me. Um, for me, I'm Annabelle. I'm one of the scientists on board. Um, I have never been on an uh, expedition. Um, so everything is surprising to me. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> the whole thing. Um, and I would definitely echo what Shelby and Diane said. But um, I guess one other thing for me is I've worked with uh, data collected on cruises before. Um, so it's really cool to kind of see like the beginning of the data collection process, which is what I'm doing here. Um, so yeah. Yeah, see it live. Yeah. See the samples coming out, bring them into the lab. Right. Yeah. It's 
start to finish. Well, not to finish, but at least start. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guessing everybody else is veterans, our veterans. <laughs> Except for Ashton. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, called out. I thought I was gonna <laughs> dodge it. <laughs> Ashton in the front row. <laughs> Ashton, you've just gotten so good at like manipulating Atalanta. I just know you've been doing this for years, so I just skip right over you. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Shelby. <laughs> Oh man, I think, you know, it's kind of simple, but one of the things that just first impressed me was uh, like the logistics. Everything's like a well-oiled machine. I've never been on an expedition with so many people and such a large uh, crew of scientists, uh, engineers, mappers, uh, videographers, like everything. And there were a lot of there just are a lot of daily logistics and like how you hand things off and how you uh you know just meals and hotels and yeah. rooms and coordination there's <laughs> just so much coordination involved and it's all run so smoothly everything just kind of clicks into place on the ship so i think it's kind of simple but that was pretty impressive and pretty surprising yeah, I think we have a pretty experienced crew yep, and a absolutely. pretty experienced yeah. chief scientist and some of our scientists. Um, Beth, who's here with us in the van at the moment, has a lot of experience with ROVs and expeditions. And um, yeah, we really lean on their expertise on the on those crews. Yeah, we also have Lynette here on the front row. Hey, Lynette. She's semi-new, <laughs> right? You've done, you've done this you, once before. Have you been on the Nautilus? Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> You're so welcome with that. Ashley's like, everyone has to answer. <laughs> you could say hard no. <laughs> oh, yeah, team hard no. Uh, uh, no, I was on Nautilus once before, but um, in a really different capacity. Um, when I was here previously, I was here as a grad student with UNH, um, working with their autonomous vessels group. Um, so I was really sort of focused on... Um, that project, um, launching, recovering, um, operating our autonomous surface vessel um, from the Nautilus. Um, so I was really involved in those operations and um, didn't really get to get involved with um, sort of the operations of Nautilus that much. Like it was sort of compart compartmentalized. Um, yeah, so now that I'm here as a mapper navigator, um, I'm getting to know um, a lot of the different roles with OET um, and what everyone does. And yeah, there's just so many different roles, um, scientists, communications, video, pilots, just everything. And I feel like everyone is just really good at their job. <laughs> um, so it's pretty awesome um, to get to be a part of it and just see what everyone does and what they do so well. That was a fantastic answer, Lynette. Aww. Yeah, <laughs> and I didn't realize that you weren't here in the capacity of, as um, uh, navigation before. Yeah, so my first time navigating. Nice. Aww. Doing a great job. I was just about to say, yeah. doing fantastic. Yeah. No one would know. Jeez, Lynette, <laughs> I'm so glad we asked. <laughs> I think a really unique thing about this expedition is how many new people there actually are on it. That was my answer, rats. That's why I jumped in. Why I jumped in. You um, gotta think of something else now. Good move. Yeah. yeah, I think, especially the last two years, uh, because of COVID, we didn't have interns on the ship. So I think it stands out a lot this year, but there's, yeah, just so many new faces and it's nice to see. Thanks. We're, we're excited to be here. <laughs> Thanks, Steven. You, no thrusters either. Kay. So Trevor, what's different about this expedition for what you? What he said. Steve <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, I'll, fine I'll, give you, I'll throw you a bone here. Okay, Herc and Atalanta have never dove together before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, that's right. Good one, good one. <laughs> Came through. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's close us out here. I'm Beth Orcutt. I'm a senior scientist from the Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences in Maine. This is my second Nautilus expedition. Um, the first uh, and like my 32nd expedition total. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, That's a lot awesome. of time at sea, <laughs> doing deep sea work. Um, 
So what's different for me for this expedition, um, the, so let me back up. I did an expedition in November, December of last year, the expedition NA-134, Lua Ea Hiki'i Ikapapaku, where we visited the Voyager Seamounts region in the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument. And I was like, wow, that was a lot of transit. Well, this expedition has blown that out of the water. <laughs> we have gone so far away from our port, uh, starting port uh, because of the weather on this expedition. So um, I think it was yesterday that we realized, or two days ago, that we realized we were now closer to Alaska yep. <laughs> than to wow. the main Hawaiian Islands. Also um, Japan, closer to Japan. Also Japan. Yeah, Japan. I think closer to Japan we're than closer to Japan. USA. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. That, makes okay. that makes more sense. That makes more sense. Yeah. So anyway, we have, we have had the opportunity to visit a large part of the ocean that a lot of people do not get to see. Um, and... Uh, what, another thing that was different about that expedition, the last expedition we were a bit further south and almost every day we saw oceanic white tip sharks um, and uh, various uh, color footed booby birds. Um, and when we were far up north, where we are now, mm -hmm. we, we haven't seen any of those sharks, but we have seen a lot of albatross. That's true. Sometimes they show up on the outside cameras when they're on. But that's really a cool experience to get to see them feeding in their natural habitat. I love watching the albatross. <laughs> gliding, just gliding forever and ever. Yeah, so we've seen two different kinds. We've seen the Laysan albatross, which I believe is also is known by the name Moli in Olelo, Hawaii. Um, and then the black-footed albatross Kaupu. I don't think I've seen, when we first started out, we had a couple of bird friends hanging out mm -hmm. on different parts, but I feel like I haven't seen any in the last couple of days. Has anybody seen any? Nobody's no. Nobody's come to take a rest on I the think boat. that was mostly the <laughs> boobies. Mm -hmm. So when we did see them uh, around King George and mm -hmm. a bit further south, so maybe we'll pick them up again as yeah. we continue south and east. <laughs> Yeah, there was an albatross sleeping on the water before we came into the van a little while ago. Oh. Yeah, I saw that too. It had been there that. for a little while as well. It was taking a good nap. I feel like I would be so nervous just sleeping on the water. Like, That's I don't want anything to like, oh, like come up and grab me. That's what I was Scary. saying. Scary. <laughs> I was like, do they really just sleep on the water? <laughs> I don't study birds, obviously. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Does anyone know if albatross can sleep while they fly? In air? Yes. I do not know. I don't know. Might be something to Google. Are you on it, Annabelle? I'm, I'm <laughs> can any birds do that? I feel yeah. like this was a trivia question. <laughs> uh, that would be very, Maybe very like cool. Maybe like half their brain? Yeah, I wondered if it was a half their brain situation. Oh. I guess I'm always like that. Well, I think, <laughs> uh, I think uh, Swifts, if I'm, it's a hard word to pronounce sometimes, Swifts, Swifts can sleep in the air as well. Maybe it's a half-brain situation, oh, but well. I'll have to oh. research further. Oh, yeah. That would definitely be oh. cool. It's appropriate. <laughs> It's true. It's really obvious that this is a room full of people who uh, conscientiously decided they wanted to study life and organisms and also conscientiously decided it was not going to be birds. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ask a question about coral, though. <laughs> Well, I think a lot of folks on Nautilus learned a lot about birds on the last expedition <laughs> oh, um, yeah. oh. because the Nautilus was a very popular location for birds. <laughs> I've, I've probably read more scientific papers about great blue herons than I've read about anything else, though. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, because I, did, I, did I did a short film about great uh, blue herons oh. and bald eagles. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Tell, cool. us some, tell us a few fun things you learned about great blue herons. Well, I'll tell you that most interesting thing which I made the film about was um, it was actually in British Columbia Trevor Hi. and uh, bald eagles are the greatest predators of great blue herons so they'll go to their nests when they have eggs or chicks in the nest and they'll raid the nest 
Um, but I think it was in the 90s, some scientists in BC started to notice that all these heron nests were being built around established bald eagle nests, like right next to them, and forming these big colonies. So they were like, why would you build a, a colony right next to your greatest predator? Yeah. So the mm, film kind of yeah. packages it as a mystery and unravels it. Oh, that was the teaser no trailer. Spoilers, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Where can we see said documentary? It's called <laughs> Nesting with the Devil. Oh, Ooh, good yeah. title. You can find it on Vimeo. That is cool. I to, like, I'm writing that, that one down. down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Diane, I'm going to come see you later if I forget. Okay, yep. <laughs> That sounds awesome. Nesting with the devil. I wow. feel like there's got to be like a song. It's like a soundtrack <laughs> with that. There is a, there is a, a Nesting score. Nesting with the devil. An original score. <laughs> if there wasn't, Diane's going to come up with right. it for you right there you go. now. <laughs> okay, I read an Audubon article about birds oh, sleeping. Let us have it. Are Abel. we ready? Okay. Where so did you find the article? What? Where is the article? Audubon. Audubon, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so the gray-headed albatross can circle the globe in only 46 days. Um, and then these researchers looked into, it doesn't, wow. say, it doesn't say albatrosses specifically, but um, they were saying that freight birds. Um, Frigate birds. Yeah. Yep. Sleep while flying, uh, but they only sleep about 45 minutes a day, according to a study that I think tagged them. Um, wow. But it does say sleeping on water is dangerous for them. Yeah. Somebody actually wrote in and said the thresher shark's tail can sometimes accidentally slice open the bellies of birds resting on the water as they pass underneath. Well, dang. Uh, that's, what, a, what a way to go. That's, that's rough. That's a rough life. You're just <laughs> trying to take a nap and, you know. <laughs> you don't even get eaten. You just get sliced just in half. Get sliced in half. Just, just sad. No wonder birds use so much energy. I Good agree. Grief. <laughs> it's like no sleep. Mm -hmm. 45 minutes a day. 45 minutes. Wow. I would be completely dysfunctional. <laughs> I wouldn't even be up. Like I would just be <laughs> laid down somewhere. Wow. What a life. Uh, what depth are we at now? Uh, so 734 meters so going down about a third of the way there a little more over a third <laughs> so I was wondering the the green v-shaped image that you see are lasers coming from Hercules that are 10 centimeters centimeters apart uh, helps Helps us sort of get an idea of how large things are when we are exploring, but as they are. And I'm going to always tell this fact now that we know it from Stephen. You will see the sort of green lines um, in sort of more turbid water, and then they'll get clearer. Um, well, they'll sort of disappear in more clear water. So that's what those are. Someone said this is nerd heaven. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching a prototype of a Star Trek crew. <laughs> nerd heaven, I love it. See who's out there. Start from the bottom. Brazil, Finland, Indonesia, Hong Kong. Oh, New Zealand. We were looking for you guys yesterday. Portugal, the Russian Federation, Turkey, Taiwan, UK, Australia, wow. Canada, and of course the States. 
are with us. Thanks wow. everybody for tuning in. There's quite a few things in this section of the water. There's been several fish. It's interesting. Somebody sent in a little trivia. Are you guys up for a challenge? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> OK, first question. Can you name the deepest known point in the Pacific? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I know that to be false because this is shallower than yesterday. <laughs> also Good deductive re reasoning. <laughs> we know it's not this where we're going now. I, I think I have a guess. I, mean, I have a guess. Maybe All right, go ahead. Physically deep. The Mariana Trench. I was going to say Challenger Deep. Mm. Yeah, Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench. Yeah, Mariana Trench. Teamwork. Nice. Whoop, whoop. All right. Question number two. The Great Barrier Reef is in the Pacific Ocean. How many individual reef systems is it made up of? I have a guess. Hmm. Okay. Does anyone else have a guess? Anyone else? No. no. Sure, I have a guess. Yes, go ahead. One. That's my guess too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, around 3,000. Oh, wow. Oh, come oh. on, it's not called the Great Barrier Reefs. <laughs> yeah, totally. I definitely thought it was one. But what counts as an individual reef? Yeah, That's exactly. Uh, like we need a definition here. That's what are individual question. reefs? Anyone, I was like, this must be Annabelle's bench, fingers. Sir. I'm sorry, can you hear that? <laughs> no, 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 you're good. good. It's great. <laughs> no, I was just like, I already know. <laughs> OK, and final question. Well, Annabelle. Back checks, I guess. <laughs> How many shipwrecks are estimated to be in the ocean? Oh, I love that question. How many shipwrecks? Of all yeah. time, like a bunch. In the history of the world? I, yeah. I think so, because the answer that they gave seems like it had to be in the history of the world in all oceans. <laughs> so I'm going to guess. A big number. <laughs> are we think, talking like wooden and metal? One or two? And they say ocean. <laughs> at, least, at least three. Freshwater count? Does freshwater count? No, just ocean. Just ocean. It says just ocean. Just ocean. I don't know. A million? I'm going to guess 10,740. <laughs> That's too okay. low. You want to know what? I heard. That's too low, Trevor. Go go up. Go up. When I was in Mississippi, I heard that there were 4,000 in the Gulf of Mexico alone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a true number. It could have been more, but. 100,740. <laughs> go up. <laughs> More than 100,000 ships. <laughs> a billion. Wow. There's got to be. Closer. Wow. This is insane. <laughs> oh, is it dinner time? Okay. Oh, how did every, this happen? I didn't even realize. Is it dinner time? Saved by the bell. <laughs> okay, any the last guesses? They, they said 3 million. Mm -hmm. 3, 3 million shipwrecks. So obviously this has to be in the history of the world in all oceans. <laughs> So. I'm getting off this ship right now. <laughs> <laughs> the odds are too much. Well, okay, here's another question for you. There, if it's Ashton. salvaged, does it count against, like, a negative? Does it cancel Ooh. itself out? Or if it stays on the bottom, does it count? Like, oh. From my very quick Google search, it said less than 1% of those have been explored. So I feel like it probably would still be a high number. Wow. I think it still counts as a shipwreck, even if it's been salvaged okay interesting i've worked on a ship that's been salvaged <laughs> so i've worked on a ship oh wow interesting oh. maybe not then maybe not i don't know okay thank you for those questions <laughs> i'm gonna go get dinner now <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that trivia i feel like a shipwreck could also be the event as right. well not only the physical so ship. the ship sinks twice uh, two shipwrecks, <laughs> two shipwrecks. <laughs> right does that count uh that's some bad luck <laughs> Let's change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> We're safe. We're Next safe. Question, Next question, please. Next question. How's the food on board? <laughs> Feeling. Well, we're about to go try it out. We're about to go try it out. And it ask Katachi when he comes on watch. I know. I'm excited to see what's going to be for Easter dinner. They're not even cooking lunch, so must be serious. It's been uh, 
kind of the talk of the last couple of days. <laughs> but yeah, whatever. Uh, I'm uh, up here on dinner relief in the back row, and I can't tell you what is for dinner, but it was smelling pretty good about half an hour ago. So <laughs> looking forward to it. I'm going to guess it's a ham. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome, Justin. We had an incredible Thanksgiving spread last year. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I, I keep hearing about that. That one is um, I think memorable, I some, apparently. I think I have some photos if anybody wants to. <laughs> yes, well, I, I am very. <laughs> it was that memorable. <laughs> I'm very interested. The last transit I was on, I missed Fourth of July at home. We were there, and oh, man. the barbecue on board was killer. They, like, pulled out all the stops. Oh, yeah. Yep, when you're away from everybody in that seat, <laughs> yeah. holidays, birthdays, they're a really big thing. It is. <laughs> oh, I know that. Looks like you guys were doing trivia earlier. And it was quite fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite fun. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Maybe I'll start bringing in three questions when we have blue water time. <laughs> so how big of an area is Challenger Deep? Wait, is this a trivia question? No, this oh. is a curious question. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But I I'm think sure Annabelle Google has left the building. Google the, can uh, tell us, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, what exactly is defined at the deep? Uh, uh, is it just like the... Uh, I would kind of see that as the absolute minimum, uh, technically maximum depth. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Hard. Yeah. While we Google that, just catching some folks up on what samples we are looking for and hoping to collect. So it'll be pretty similar to what we've been doing on past dives, um, collecting rocks for uh, understanding the origin of the ridge and these seamounts. Um, and also the rocks will be used to help with um, sort of identifying uh, microbe mineral features and um, also collecting some samples to sort of assess animal biodiversity um, at these depths. So that's what we're doing. And that's pretty much the goal on most of these dives, if not all of them. Yep, and everything's been so different so far. I know. I'm wondering if this is going to be less dense, more dense. I don't know. I'm excited to find out. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, a little search on uh, the Mariana Trench and the Challenger Deep. Um, it's down to uh, uh, between 10,902 meters to uh, 10,929 meters, so quite a bit deeper than um, wow. uh, Hercules is capable of yep. diving. Can't go down there. <laughs> but people have been, right? Uh, a couple yep. of yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. People have been, but not Herc. We actually were doing a amazing. teacher climate change workshop mm -hmm. virtually uh, a year ago, and Nicole Yamase actually came and was our keynote speaker. Oh, wow. And she was the, one, wow. of the, one of the few who's been down yeah, there. Yeah, one of the few. Not many. She's really cool, doing some really cool research, too. Yeah. And the aerial extent of this uh, Challenger Deep uh, is consisting of three basins. Each of these are around six to ten kilometers long and they sit kind of one after the other slightly offset and that's mm. a pattern that in uh, geology we call on echelon so they're kind of like at an angle mm -hmm. like tilted at an angle but all right next to each other oh nice that's yeah. interesting i didn't know that <laughs> gotta love the uh fancy and often random geology terminology we have <laughs> <laughs> love the geology jargon me too <laughs> What was the term I was trying to remember? Hyoclastite? Hyo <laughs> probably one of the worst words we have in geology. Uh, Hyaloclastite. Hyalo. I Hi missed a syllable. Hi so yeah. close. It's oh. a mouthful. It's like my vocab <laughs> word. I have to use it in a sentence okay. every day. Hyaloclastite. Well, now you have to tell me what it is. because. <laughs> so this is something we've run across a couple of times, uh, at least once so far on this uh, expedition at uh, Unnamed North, where... Um, Hyaloclastites are a type of volcano sedimentary rock, so they're both igneous and sedimentary. And what happens is it's a very high energy, kind of like explosive volcanic uh, environment, where instead of getting, lo getting lava flows like we've seen most of the time uh -huh. um, on our dives, uh, it's actually more explosive and the lava gets uh, torn to bits and mm -hmm. kind of freezes in the seawater. 
and it, it just stacks up and forms these uh, these sedimentary piles with fragments of lava and uh, like, like smaller, uh, you know, all sorts of different glass sizes from like, you know, like sand or silt size grains all the way up to pieces uh, centimeters across, um, maybe even larger in some cases. And uh, that gets, uh, that can be pretty well welded together, like one of our samples down mm -hmm. in the lab is, and sometimes it can be kind of gooey, not very well welded together. <laughs> wow. And uh, it, it's just gooey so, rocks. so altered. So instead of looking like, um, you know, these, these kind of grayish uh, basalts that mm -hmm. we're pulling up, these are kind of pale tan in color with like blotches of red oh, and orange. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, they look sort of sharp, were they? When, when you yeah. got them into the lab, were they rough, sharp, kind of? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the, the little uh, volcanic clasts in there are pretty mm -hmm. angular, uh, so they look a lot like uh, uh, what we what we might call a breccia in geology too. Mm -hmm. Something that's very broken up, and uh, the, how angular those pieces are tells you that those pieces weren't transported very far from where they originated from. Okay. So I'm kind of of the mind that we got really close to an old volcanic vent mm -hmm. at the end of that dive. Interesting. That was wow. a very nice. interesting ridge. Yeah, hyaloclastite. Hyaloclastite. It's a little hard to say. <laughs> hyaloclastite. I have to say it like five just times keep, over. Just keep practicing yeah, until it just I rolls know. off the I tongue. I don't know why it just come, it does not come naturally. I have the same problem, but with species names. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for that, Val. I appreciate it. Yeah, Anytime. that was very interesting. Yeah. Anytime. I feel like I learn new things all the time on this ship As from like learning things about Herc and the functions there to the ship itself, to mm -hmm. the science, to yeah, everything. It's just constant. My little brain is oozing with knowledge. Yes. I don't know if it's oozing yet. <laughs> 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 it's not <called> <laughs> But, you know, but yeah, really, it's awesome. That's the really it. cool thing yeah. about um, like these interdisciplinary cruises like this. You know, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. I've been on cruises that are just like geology, and we we go and we uh, dredge really really deep flanks of sea mm -hmm. mounts and pull up rocks that way, and that's like everybody cares about the rocks. Right. Um, yeah. But on on interdisciplinary ones like these, uh -huh. uh, this this is so cool because you have so many people who are literally experts in what we're doing. So everybody in the control van right now has incredible amounts of expertise in what in what they do and uh we all get to learn from each other now we're gonna sign shelby off so she can go grab some dinner christopher is gonna come into the science communication fellow spot pilots you're actually Getting a few questions about uh, the ROVs and the tethers. I don't know if you uh, feel like tackling that right now, but would the ROVs survive a deeper depth if they had a longer tether? And does the tether cable ever give troubles? For example, twisting in the currents. Uh, sure. Yeah, we can we can answer that. Um, so, so the tethers will the cable that's connecting the two vehicles together um, so when we when we say tether it's this kind of uh, it's yellow <laughs> trying to think of the right way to describe this here not doing a very good job so we'll keep tossing at once <laughs> all the best anyway um, yeah so this tether is connecting the, the two the two vehicles together uh, so if you have a longer tether um, that only means that that distance between the two vehicles is longer um, so Really the thing that's uh, limiting our depth is the ratings, the pressure ratings on all of our housings and, you know, basically our foam pack, you know, everything has a certain pressure that it can withstand. Um, so the limiting factor isn't going to be our tether. Uh, maybe they're talking about the 6-8 cable that's connecting the Atalanta or Argus. Uh, and that certainly, that length can be more of a limiting factor, but... Um, so if you have like too short of a cable, then you're certainly not going to go very deep. Um, but yeah, so that's that limiting factor. And I forgot what the other part of the question was. I'm sorry. No, that was it. You got it. I think just tether management. Uh, oh, Raj. Oh yeah. Um, certainly, if we if we uh, do some wonky things, like uh, 
put a lot of wraps in our tether, then we do a lot of pirouettes in a circle and we just keep on twisting in one direction, then you can um, put a lot of stress on the tether and potentially have adverse effects from that. Like a loss of a, a loss of a signal, breakage of a fiber, etc. That's running through it. Uh, yep. We need another question about uh, the Niskin bottles. Are the water sample bottles we use for eDNA open at both the top and the bottom? Well, that's a good question. Actually, they are until we close them. Um, essentially, uh, there's like a snap with a lanyard that the ROV pilots will pull, um, which closes off the bottle at a particular depth um, or at a particular spot, Ouch. and um, that gets a discrete sample. So. I don't know if that answered the question. Did that answer the question? I think so. OK, great. We'll just hit uh, 1160 meters down, and we're going to start around 2,000 meters on this dive. This is a longer one, too. So we're going to end up somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,300 uh, meters at the end of this dive, uh, about three kilometer track. And we expect this to go for around 22 hours this time. So this will be our longest dive so far of this cruise. Yeah, you get to hear from all of our different watches. Yep. And us twice. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll be cruising. Al we'll be cruising along at a uh, pretty, pretty uh, pokey pace along that track. We're also not going to pick up uh, samples at the same frequency that we did on other dives. We're going to spread that out further across. Uh, uh, this longer track that we're running because um, even though we're doing a longer track we still have about the same sample capacity on Herc so I uh, can't take twice as many samples. Val, were you still going to want a geology sample at the base just because that would be the deepest point? Um, so uh, what we can do is uh, if there's a suitable rock to pick up once we hit bottom uh, we'll look for something that, um, that uh, would be good for uh, Beth's work and then once she's done with those, she tends to turn those over to me to process for geology. So we can get a combined sample on that. Okay. Can I put you on the spot again? Okay. Ask you a geology question. Like, how do you find a suitable rock? Like, what are you looking for with a suitable rock? So that depends on um, what kind of geological specimen we're after. So ah, for okay. uh, uh, Beth Orcutt's work, um, she's interested in uh, the microbes that are... Uh, uh, kind of calling the rocks and the manganese crusts home. So she's looking for stuff that um, has these manganese tr crusts with a botryoidal texture. It's another fun one to say. Botryoidal? Botryoidal. Can we all say it as a group? <laughs> botryoidal. Botryoidal. <laughs> okay, great. Ba based off botrytis? Sort of. Um, yeah, it, it has sort of a uh, like bulbous or almost bubble kind of appearance. Um, and uh, uh, that usually means that there's something housed in there, some bugs housed in there that she's interested in working on. Um, it can also sometimes have pretty well-preserved um, igneous material somewhere in there too that would be good for uh, uh, the geology team that I'm part of to work on in order to understand the origins of these lavas. Um, if we're just doing geology samples, there are a couple of options that we, that we tend to look for. Um, we look for more angular rocks instead of rounded, because uh, that can uh, give us a little bit of uh, a hint that those rocks might be uh, relatively well preserved for how, how old we think they are. Um, I've also been having some pretty good luck with things that look kind of like a wedge shape, um, sort of like a really wide, uh, dark colored uh, ice cream cone. Um, these are, those are fragments, uh, most of the time of something we call pillow lavas. And, uh, those are like little lava fingers that kind of make their way down slopes and, uh, uh, just propagate through that way. And they, uh, the way that they cool, they have, uh, structural weaknesses that start at the rim and go in toward the center of that lava flow. And, uh, sometimes those, uh, lavas break apart on those little radial uh, planes of weakness that give it that kind of conic ice cream cone or wedge shape and uh, sometimes those have some really nice samples in them too under those manganese crusts. Hmm. 
So there are a couple of different shapes that we look out for um, depending on uh, what the science goal is with that sample that we pick up. Nice. Thanks for that. Yeah, I don't normally think of rocks as pillows, but, you know. For some reason um, we do. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it's, it's because when they uh, when you get uh, lava flows like that that stack up on each other, mm -hmm. uh, in outcrop they, they do look kind of like a stack of pillows. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to look out for that. And I'm going to use my terms. <laughs> <laughs> my vocab words. But sometimes we've been finding that these uh, uh, sea mounts, too, uh, they, there's a lot of rocks that seem to be stuck in place, and not a lot that is uh, uh, loose, which makes it easy for us to grab. Um, so sometimes you just see a sample, and sometimes you just jump on it, because that might be the only sample that you're able to collect in that area for a little while. Nice. So some of it is opportunistic, too. Mm -hmm. One of those that we picked up on an earlier dive uh, in a place where we were having trouble finding uh, something that the ROV could grab, uh, I brought it back to the lab and cut it open, and it turned out to be about 95% manganese crust and just a teeny little bit of the rim of a pillow Whoa. basalt. So okay. sometimes that happens, too. Yeah. Wow. But you never entirely know until you slice them open. All right. Well. Annabelle's back, so I am signing off. You eat All fast. Right. Well, that was quick. <laughs> Did you do a scrape and slurp? <laughs> <laughs> I just keep picturing Herc with the slurp. I'm like, <laughs> yep. Yep. I never thought of the slurp as a feeding portal for the vehicle. Really? Uh, Chris was Kelly cool was making jokes about that a couple of days ago. We were talking about trying to get one of those green things, the tuna kit looking things. And we were talking about doing a scrape and slurp technique to try to get a little <laughs> bit. And Chris comes up on the chat and he's like, that's how I eat my dinner. <laughs> that's kind of what we do during dinner relief too, I think. Yeah, I believe so. <laughs> my family eats dinner very fast, so I have learned to eat dinner fast as well. Gotcha. Yeah, it will come in handy on ships. Yeah. <laughs> I have never learned how to eat quickly. You had a comment uh, noticing that the depths for Hurricane Argus, or uh, Atlanta rather, on this trip are not coming up on the Nautilus Live page. If oh, you if you do right. want to see the uh, depth, you can click on more data over on the, the right hand side on the bottom underneath where it gives the ship heading and everything, and you can see the depth at that link. I'm not sure why the other data isn't coming up up there, but you do have access to that if you are tuning into Nautilus Live with us. Uh, somebody commented that they're having a drinking game for every time we say Batrioidal. Oh no! <laughs> oh, Don't tell us these wow. things. <laughs> Man. Then we can start gaming the system. I yeah. know. That's a bad, that's a bad I know. idea. <laughs> That's wow. what I'm going to think about every time we say about you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Good job. Go. Yes. Uh, We're going to have a rough night. Yep. Oh. Yeah, make sure uh, whoever's doing that, um, make sure you have a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> Are you just going to sit over there in the chair and, like, whisper it? No. <laughs> I do not take any responsibility for people's <laughs> life choices. <laughs> <laughs> Only my own. Fair enough. It's <laughs> good policy in general. Uh, another question about what determines the time of day you have the ROVs descend? Oh. Ships change. Yeah. I think we, from what I understand, you know, we need basically like two crews of people, right? One on deck. Uh, handling lines, handling the cranes, sending Herc Atalanta over. We need one crew up here in the command center ready to pilot, testing things out, navigation. Um, yeah. Yeah, so we do that at shift changes when uh, more people are awake and uh, able to help out um, rather than uh, something mid shift if we can help it because uh, sometimes that means we have to go and wake people up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we like to make sure. Everybody's uh, rested and operating at uh, the capacity that they need to be. Because uh, if you're if you're really sleep deprived, that's that's when potential mistakes can happen. So you know we try to let everybody get the rest that they need. 
Indeed. Yep. We appreciate it. Yeah, the joys of a 24-hour operation. <laughs> yeah, we do operate 24-7, which means somebody is always up and operating the ship. If we're doing a 22-hour dive, that means folks are running ROVs and logging data and managing the communications and all the different things. And we have scientists up at all hours um, helping yep. up here. And then, of course, after Herc and Atalanta come up, um, they'll run down to the lab and begin the whole process of um, working with their samples. Yep. Get those so, uh, documented, uh, stored away, preserved, whatever we need to do, and uh, then packed away uh, to go off to labs that are going to work on these. And uh, if uh, we're not working on particular samples, those will go back as archival material because uh, uh, these materials do tend to come in handy down the road as uh, uh, people's research questions evolve. And, you know, this, the site may become of interest uh, at some point to uh, uh, some additional folks besides uh, just my geology, uh, the geology team that I'm part of. And uh, as far as uh, bio, this place is pretty unexplored too. So I don't know. Um, you want to talk about that a little bit? Um. Yeah, I guess for just one overarching thing with uh, microbiology and I guess environmental microbiology in general is that the methods we use are always kind of changing and um, being optimized for things. So saving samples, um, yeah, you never know when, when you're going to need them. <laughs> Sounds a lot like what we have going in geochemistry. We're yeah. always innovating, you know, always finding new, new dimensions to look at or improve techniques. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's always good to have that archival material available to revisit mm -hmm. or sometimes visit for the first time. And how do you, this might be a bad question, but how do you store your rocks? Do you no, just that's a great question. Um, so to process those, we do the best we can to dry them out, which can be hard because uh, a lot of these have uh, vesicles or little bubbles in them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really hard to get the water completely out of the interiors of these things. Um, but once they're sufficiently dry and I've gone through and uh, taken any subsamples and like uh, documented some rock descriptions uh, that go into the archive records to help you know other scientists with uh, the sample selections, um, they just get put in plastic bags labeled both inside and outside. Just in case the outside label gets damaged, we then still have uh, we we then still have information about mm -hmm. what that sample is, and uh, they get they get put into you know, some sort of a storage bucket or something and put into a geological repository. Oh, very cool. We, we like our five gallon buckets quite a bit. <laughs> All right, so uh, Beth is coming back on, so I'm gonna turn that back over to uh, her and I will be back at midnight tonight or 12 to four after dark. Ooh, Thanks for like the, the yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the geology lesson, that's good. So we are currently descending to 2,100 meters, and we are at uh, uh, 1,500 meters. So probably about two thirds of the, or three quarters rather, good math of the way uh, through our descent. It's a hundred-minute-long descent, going at about uh, one mile an hour or so. Uh, about the speed you can walk comfortably. But then we'll be on bottom before the end of this watch. Um, water temperature has dropped. We're down near uh, below three degrees Celsius. It's nice and cold down there. Um, there are a couple questions about uh, shipwrecks. If we ever run across them or what our priorities are looking toward them. There's always the possibility that we'll find wrecked ships or, or planes. Uh, we are not too, too far from Midway Island, and there are some uh, sea battles that took place there. Um, we don't expect to come across any. We're not particularly looking for any, but uh, you never know what you're going to find. The ocean is a big and mysterious place. Our main goals uh, for this dive are going to be collecting rock samples both for uh, geological and biological research. 
We're going to be collecting water samples that go along with the biological research on those rocks and uh, for some eDNA sampling to find out what cells of organisms that maybe we didn't see are also in the water. And um, there is a possibility that we will collect some biological samples, though uh, only at the discretion of um, our scientists ashore and on board. Uh, we have some strict protocols we need to follow before we decide to take biological samples because we're in the Papahanu Mokoakea Marine National Monument. Um, we're in a, a restricted space for that. Um, this cruise has been at sea since April 7th and we plan to return to Honolulu, Hawaii on the 30th of April. Oh, there's a question about the lab. Uh, what's happening under the plastic shrouded cube in the sample lab? Magic. Ooh. <laughs> Secrets. <laughs> Annabelle, do you want to describe it? Um, sure. Uh, so for the microbiology samples um, that Beth and I are collecting, um, it's really important to try and limit any contamin... Oh, look. It's pulled up right there on feed three. All right. um, so it's really important to try and limit contamination from other microbes that might be on our hands or in the air, etc. So those shrouds are set up so that we can actually, if you're looking at the one on satellite three, um, the front of that plastic can come up um, so we can kind of like stick our hands in there um, and work in that sort of confined, more of a confined airspace. Um, it's sort of a makeshift shroud. Uh, typically in a lab there are other more permanent um, ways that you can conduct microbial research sort of in these like confined air spaces um, but that is a part of I guess microbiology on a ship. <laughs> did I do okay explaining that? You did great. Okay. <laughs> so there's a secondary purpose for the one on the table because there's actually two in the lab. There's one in the back by the door. The one in uh, the right hand side of the view has a dual purpose that we're also using that space to break rocks um, to get at the microbes that are living on those rocks. And that process generates a lot of rock shards that like to go flying around the lab. So by doing that work under a shroud, we prevent projectiles from hitting everybody in the lab while we're working. We appreciate that. <laughs> One of our viewers just went to look at Steven's film Oh, thought oh it, nice. Thought it, thought it was great. Okay. That's awesome. Nesting Thanks. with the devil. Nesting with the devil. Ah, such a good title. Blue herons. I love blue herons. I'm going to check it out, too. Me, too. They were the first, like, birds that got me into bird photography. Yeah. They're fascinating. They're huge and prehistoric looking and... Yet graceful. Yes. Speaking of prehistoric. Oh. <laughs> yes. Is that oh. the first dinosaur of the night? <laughs> yeah. It the is. Dinosaur of the night. <laughs> it's beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's another comment uh, about potentially having a Nautilus bingo game. Every that time would be a certain winner. Things happen. Mm -hmm. What What do you think would be on the Nautilus bingo game? Um, I don't know. Things that happen frequently, I guess. Or I've heard Kelly's a lot of funny list. ones on there. Someone's like, "Oh, we got to take a wrap out." That was a good one for a bingo card. Okay. <laughs> one time we had a bingo card for the navigation intern, just for things he would say. <laughs> nice. I think I remember that. I think it was the one where we were uh, searching for an airplane wreck, so it, there was, it was just Argus, and there wasn't as much for us to constantly be doing in the van, so it got a little slow, so we had to invent some games, yeah. Yeah, on that cruise I learned 74 knots. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you tying knots uh, in the just front row. Knots. Do you remember them all? Uh, I probably remember 30 of them. Okay. Oh really? Gosh. Wow. That's amazing. There was a lot of 
the the longest dive was that dive. That was what 120 hours or something. Whoa. No, is that is that right? We did a couple of them, but that was the longest one. 120. I don't know wow. something like that with Argus alone. 120 hours straight. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. Because wow. it can stay on the bottom for. A yeah, long time. I was just trying to think about that. Like, what's the limiting factor in terms of time? Like, just you know, weather and seas, right? Mainly, yeah. Well, it depends on what you're doing. Like yeah. with us, we're collecting. We're sampling, right? Samples, and so biology. that needs to come up. But yeah. if but you're. I've been part of cruises where they're supported like maybe just working in one spot a mm -hmm. lot um, and so they launch elevators over the side to bring samples up and down but the ROV can stay in the water. Fascinating Whoa. elevators. So, like a ROV dive that lasted like a week and just sent huh. samples up and down. Is it essentially the elevator is essentially like another ROV or it's just a cable with nope. a box or? Not nope. even cable it's, it's just a floaty sinky. It's huh. a, it's a like usually a fiberboard deck, okay. a fiberglass, you know, decking like mm -hmm. this on the front porch here. Yeah. Um, that's got uh, floats on the top and holds a weight under the bottom, and has a acoustic release or a, a pole release. Uh huh. And you just like pile milk crates on top or whatever, and you exchange stuff out. And when you're done, you pull the release. It drops the weight stack, floats back to the surface. So under the train wheel. Wow. Oh. Train wheels are a good one huh. for that. Yeah, train wheels are pretty big simple old stack then. of dive weights. <laughs> That's fascinating. Didn't know. I'm new to ROV work and there's a cool jelly in the Atlantis uh, camera. It's coming in and out. Maybe it left us. Ooh. Oh. 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 oh, oh, it did leave us. What? All right, what else would be on the bingo card? Wait, we're talking about bingo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm back from dinner. Somebody, somebody put in a question in the chat about what would be on a Nautilus bingo card. Oh. Wow, these questions are like top tier. OK. Probably like gauge check, maybe. I don't know. What do you say when you need to do a gauge check? Gauge oh, check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another good one. Yeah, totally. What was that? I didn't hear it. I, I don't think you're on SPL. What do you eat on the ship? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about uh, video zoom? <laughs> Guaranteed. That's the free middle square. <laughs> Hard no. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely for our shift. Hard no. God, bingo sounds fun right now. It's nice when you make a lot of easy yeah, ones. Yeah. Like you do bridge nav would be another one. Yeah. yeah. Porch light. <laughs> <laughs> Porch light, definitely. Lasers off, lasers on. Delta. <laughs> 10 centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> What sample number is this? <laughs> I don't think you're on SPL. <laughs> you tricked me. I thought I had to look. <laughs> I know I looked too. Partial zoom. <laughs> Full what? Do we have time for a... No. <laughs> Someone said bridge nav is the center square. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom out on high pack. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on blue right now? I actually don't know what blue is. Yeah, what? Oh. <laughs> I mean, I know it's on there. I just don't know what it stands for. Okay. Got it. Got it. I'm not. Stephen, multiple people went and watched Nesting with the Devil now, and they are thoroughly enjoying it. They said it was fantastic. That's very cool. <laughs> 
I appreciate that. At least that. like three to four people was like, oh my God, it's amazing. Are you saying some people were more interested in an actual <laughs> documentary versus <laughs> this blue water? <laughs> I mean, when you got a title like that, you got to check abandoned. it out. <laughs> but they're still with us if they're sending us chat messages. Good point. I yes. don't feel abandoned anymore. <laughs> They're yeah. still here. They, they, they still care. They care. They're letting us know. <laughs> it's only uh, 12 minutes, I believe. I'll be watching that soon, in the next 24 hours. Any I'll other documentaries? You, I'm going to blame you with the <laughs> Wi-Fi slow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Steven, I'm curious. What is the most challenging animal that you've tried to document with video in your work? Um, the one that's coming to mind is uh, we went to Quebec to try to film beavers underneath ice. Oh. And cool. we didn't film them underneath <laughs> ice. We filmed some muskrats. <laughs> but we sat on a frozen pond for a few nights, uh, yeah, probably w a week or so. No luck. Oh, That's man. rough. Yep, but it happens. What type of special equipment did you guys bring to film under ice? <laughs> we had a camera, well, I'm not gonna say what camera it was because I wasn't a big fan of it, but uh, essentially it was, <laughs> it was a camera in a little, bottle and that went on a pole we had a hole cut in the ice as if we were ice fishing a little tent and a monitor set up in the tent and so we could control the camera and from there I had a controller um, it was pretty it wasn't too complicated it was basically a camera on a pole with some wires running from the camera up into our tent what time of year was this? This was, I want to it was cold. Uh, well, I want to say like January. Oh, right. Okay, so like in the middle of the ice cover season, not in the spring or yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. It was the coldest place I've ever been, actually. I can't remember the town. But uh, I would walk outside and my, we were staying in a hotel and I would, if I went outside to my mustache would freeze instantly. Mm -hmm. You get nosebleeds? No. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds intense. Nosebleeds. I felt like we we're really far north in Quebec, but then you look at a map and you're like, wow, we're there's so much more Canada north of There's us. There's so much of Canada. <laughs> yes. It's absurd, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How cold was it? Do you remember? Uh, I don't think it got above uh, above freezing in the oh. time that I was there. Um, so my m mustache was freezing from my breath during the, the day, and then we were right. out at night. Luckily, yeah. we did have a, a heater set up in the tent, so it wasn't too bad. But getting there, we had to kind of trek through the woods, through the snow. Right. Yeah. I mean, it w it w I had plenty of... Uh, I was comfortable, but it was just cold. I don't mind the cold, though. I'd rather be cold than hot. I'm with you there. Same. Not that cold where hair is freezing, but I prefer to be cool. What's the coolest place everybody has ever traveled to, like, for leisure? As in temperature? The coldest place you've ever <laughs> traveled to. Oh, coolest. <laughs> but not temperature-wise, but <laughs> coolest <laughs> as in cool. <laughs> Hmm. It'd be easier to answer the first question. Yeah. <laughs> I can't Everywhere is so different. Let's start with coldest place, then we'll get mm -hmm. to coldest place. Okay. <laughs> I think Diane wins this one. 
Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> Diane's not oh, here. Yeah. It's me right now. Yeah. <laughs> but that wasn't leisure. That wasn't leisure. Right, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Not leisure. Oh, that's true. That's Can't true. be field work. Oh, crap. Oh, yeah, back. right. Okay, coldest for leisure. I don't travel to cold places for leisure. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Wait, the coldest place or the coolest place? I, I thought it was like, coldest and then coolest. Like, two separate questions. I just want it coolest in the regular way, not in the temperature way. <laughs> Answer the question however you like. And let us guess. Well, I went to, I went to uh, Vanuatu. Oh. For leisure. I also spent some That's time cool. on uh, Samoa after... We sailed to American Samoa oh, Nautilus. Cool. I spent a week in Samoa. Ooh. We stayed in a little fale on the beach. Sounds played amazing. Rugby on the beach. Uh, yeah, it was fun. That sounds amazing. I'm thinking of the coldest place I've traveled for leisure, <laughs> and uh, that was probably driving through the Swiss Alps. Ooh, Ooh yeah, uh, that'll do in it. In wintertime. Which, like, we were young and dumb, so we didn't really, like, think, like, oh, most people don't try to do this. <laughs> There's nobody on the road. And we went through a uh, border crossing, and you know, there's a little rest station there. You can check the vending machine, and, yeah, their uh, restrooms are not heated. Oh, no. Oh, that's, oh, no. that's rough. It was cold. But it was beautiful. That drive was amazing. Where were you going to and coming from in that drive? Where were we going? We were leaving Zurich, I mm -hmm. think, and going down to Italy. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. and then we abandoned Italy because we couldn't figure out triple parking, so we went <laughs> to Nice instead. Nice. <laughs> Not the coldest place, but definitely the coolest place, I think. I've ever been to, and I went alone, was Cuba. Oh, Ooh. yeah. I've been to Cuba. That was amazing. Oh, that was so fun. Like, going back in time. It was so So, did you go to cool. Vinales? Did you go out to the countryside? I was on the Isla de Juventud for a lot okay. of it because I was doing, I guess it's field work, so this maybe doesn't count, <laughs> but was <coughs> doing, like, coral reef ecology stuff in the marine reserve there, mm -hmm. the island off of Cuba, but it was really cool it was. to be in Havana. It was Amazing. Yeah. If you ever go back, uh, Vinales is like the country is about three hours. Yeah. I had some friends that went there. Yes. Outside. And you go in like these caves and the stromatolites are just like, wow, crazy. What's a stromatolite, Shelby? Um, I think from what I recall, it is these sort of long um, rock structures. They hang from like the ceiling of the caves, I believe. Oh, stalactite? Wait, stalactite? Stalactite, thank you. The stromatolites are the, they're like, aren't those the yes. microbial yeah. layers, the first oxygenators thank you. <laughs> in the world? <laughs> thank you. It's all right. Together we figure it out. Together. <laughs> Wait, what? Which do still exist in Australia somewhere? Yeah, there are modern microbial uh, <clears throat> stromatolites that are formed. A couple different places, South Africa, Australia. And just for our audience at oh. home, we've got Doppler lock on bottom. Looks like we're uh -oh. maybe 40 meters off bottom. So, our next adventure. Oh, thanks, Paul. We're on our way. Coming soon. Ooh. Taking bets oh, for what you think we'll see when we get to the seafloor. <laughs> that was a good uh, tension spike. We got buried the wire cam. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> That's fine. There Don't is a Nautilus live limits. bingo. Uh, wow. Already made on the Nautilus Live yep. website. Well, somebody Let's beat us see. to it. Is it as good as ours? <laughs> Definitely. No. <laughs> Did you see the bingo downstairs? Is that how we got onto this topic? No, someone no. brought it up on okay. the science chat. Bridge, this is Nav. Yes. Yeah. On here. <laughs> okay. Uh, bio box. What's the, what's the downstairs bingo? They made one on the last cruise that has a bunch of inside jokes, but also a lot of very relevant things on it. Gotcha. Bottom, in sight. Woohoo. I'm coming down. I don't understand. Here we go. All oh. right, thrusters and auto heading, please. All right, here's Steven, the bottom. Can we get the sonar view in channel three? Roger. And can you please look north? Heading north. Yeah. 
And let's do a white balance whenever you are ready. You RV. betcha, you betcha. I can't wait. So for our audience at home, if anybody's new to what we're doing, uh, you able to get north? And yeah, how we actually, evaluate the seafloor in the channel three feet or lower are left hand what? quad. Wait, are you still are you still coming down? What's going on here? Oh no, I'm not. I'm coming you, up a little. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I should have totally. Are you sorry. still going down? No, no that's I'm, okay. I'm not going down. Okay. Sorry. I caught you on the delta. Can I reset DBL? Yeah. Can you spin to starboard, please? Yeah. All the way around to 180. Totally. Take a wrap out. No, I just mean to until your delta's back. Up. Oh, is that a seek over? Okay. You can come up I at 20. Can do that. Coming up. Uh, no. Not yet. Yeah, sorry about that. It's look like crinoids. These rock formations are cool. Are these uh, yeah, rocks go battery ahead. Go ahead. You can go for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard oh, to tell yet. We need to zoom in, but we'll wait till we get the color balance done. Was that a stocked crinoid? See, Lily? Yeah, that's what I was just oh. looking at. It looks like we've seen a couple <coughs> of stocked crinoids. Okay, now you can turn around. Oh, yeah. Okay. Delta's All right. better now. They're going to be a familiar face on this cruise at uh, dive. And bamboo. Nice looking busted open pillows. <clears throat> That's a pretty. All right. Beth, now that we're at the bottom, do you want to just remind folks what we are hoping to sample or what we're looking for, sort of our objectives? Uh, yeah, sure, we could do that while they're getting set up. Mm -hmm. um, so we're diving on Solid A Seamount today in the Papahanamoa Kuakea. Ashton, could you turn the lasers off and confirm that the porch light is off? Yes, please. Thank you. <coughs> All right, let's see if we can fill it. All right, so we're down Close. in our dive here and um that's full zoom our objective is I'll, I'll, I'll challenge you to see if we can fill the frame but oh yeah it's gets dark okay go back to where yeah thank you for trying that looks great i'll finish my introduction in a minute yeah sure okay we're gonna go dark for a second now that i know what he's doing it's so cool <laughs> And we're going to white balance now. I I think that's I think that's right. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Ooh, and lasers can come back on. Lasers on. Okay, craft secure. You can give me front porch view, please. Okay. Super duper. Uh, how'd that reset go? Did that go away? All right, you happy with that spot? I think so. Am I looking like I'm in the right spot? You can give me some zoom in there. Sure. It's pretty close, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool, good enough. All right. Okay. Okay, I think you have Argus Centering on too. 
which maybe is fine, but Argus Ash Auto Center. Ashton, are you okay with some zoom on Atalanta? Okay, great. I am. Roger. I think we're pretty steady right now. Okay, I think we're ready to do some science. <laughs> Hooray! Can I have a high Yay. pack screen, please? Absolutely. Thank you. Are we ready to start moving? Um, just a moment, Lynette. Okay. I just want to kind of pan around here, see what we see. Sure. sure. We might want to try to collect a rock sample because a lot of these look um, nicely broken. Okay. Well, I'll kinda just have, have a gander. Almost columnar features, but they're very big. It's very steep wow, here. Wow, that's steep, yeah. Yeah, so when we mapped out this dive track, this is a very steep ridge we're going to be following on uh, today's dive. So not a lot of animals. We see some of these yellow stocked crinoids. Mm -hmm. Interesting kind of flow feature here. So the fact that there's not a lot of life here could mean a couple things, one of which is that maybe this slope is not very stable. Um, and so it's just not a great place to try to make a living. Or it could be that the currents here aren't great, the food's not great, and we'll see what it looks like as we keep going up. Yeah, that's a really, really lovely, um, just a conglomeration of pillow lavas here. <coughs> um, Super clear water. Yeah, I was just yeah. about to say that. Yep. Yeah, very what clear. What lasers? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, it's making it difficult for me to be like, oh, can we pick that up? Oh, wait, no, that's like 50 me centimeters. <laughs> <laughs> Can't pick that up. Um, what would you like to do? Yeah, Trevor, can we look in this pile? Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> can we look over here and see if there's anything we can pick up? That's extremely funny. Yeah, totally we can. <laughs> And that really was an accident. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> Look at the dinosaur pile. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to porch porch it up here. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. We're looking for something that's maybe like in the 15 centimeter um, range. So our lasers are 10 centimeters apart. How about, are we looking for a real angular We're lake? looking for angular, yeah. How about this bad boy here? That's maybe 20 centimeters. Yeah, that might be a little too big, but maybe the one these behind it might be good. Well, I'm happy to give it a poke if you want. Yeah, let, let's see what we can get. Okay, can I get craft arm, please? Craft arm. So coming back to our question from the audience, or maybe Shelby, you were just setting it up. Mm -hmm. One of the things we're trying to do on this expedition is understand the origin of these underwater ancient volcanoes. And the way that we do that is by collecting rock samples. Uh, and we're specifically looking for certain types of rocks that aren't too highly altered um, and that contain some of the original uh, minerals and crystals that were formed when this volcano was formed. And often angular pieces are a good indication of that. They've broken off sometime. Um, Maybe recently. Oops, punch. Sorry, I interrupted you. I just had to punch the ground there. Hmm. Broken off. Not recently. Oh yeah. my! Who's driving this thing? <laughs> All right. What's that? What is that thing? Animal moving? on the bottom of the screen. What are we? This one? Oh, it's moving. moving. Away. It's purple, and it just like, left yeah, the bottom it has of the frame. Like hairy things. We'll look for it in a minute. Yeah, these mm. look all like they've been piled on top of each other. If I pull one out, this whole mountain falls. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, what about, let's see, Can is this piece right behind your manip, is that pick up movable? Negative. Oh. Interesting. Yeah, these are all glued together. Yeah, these are tightly packed. I would have not expected that. This just looks like a yeah. field of rubble. Yeah. Let's try over here. More sedimented zone. There's also maybe this one. I don't know if you can reach this far. Yeah. Val chiming in and saying that this is pillow lava. For those of you who are okay. that one here. Can we make sure we get some captures here yeah, while we're picking this up? Can we do that before we pick it up? Uh, yeah. Diane. I've got some. Okay, great. Yep. Go ahead, Trevor. Okay. Keep here moving. We go. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, zoom in there, please, Steve. Can you pause just a moment so I can get a... You gotta yeah. be fast. <laughs> Sometimes when you're rotating the, the picks I take are a little grainy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's take that one, too. Great. Good and to go. If you're interested, come out a little bit there, Steve. Good there. Get some lasers on it. Yeah, yeah so it's about 10. 10, 10 and change? Yeah. Okay, starboard side? Yes, starboard Roger side. That. A is probably good. Yeah, the world okay. is your oyster at this point. by on the starboard Okay, full wide, please. Box. Oh, you are full wide. Look at how wide you are. Roger, standing by. Double wide. Okay, go ahead and open. NA138-064. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Can we, um, I'd like to maybe just try to collect two small pieces here, just in case. And there's one, yeah, Trevor. Yeah, you can leave the box open there. Okay. See that one up there? Yeah. Looks You're talking like this guy? The one that's just behind your manip now. Yeah. Right back here. Hmm. Is it? Zoom in, please, Steve. Thank you. It looks like it's just sitting there. <laughs> Maybe it's attached. Uh, I would say that is... I think you're on the wrong rock. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm talking about this one right here. Oh, you're talking this one? Yeah. Ah, thank you. Also Ooh, I saw it move. Did you? Okay. We have potential... I think I saw it move. I don't know about that. I don't either, but I choose to believe. No, oh, Come yeah. wide, please. That's... Ah, no. Okay. I did not see it move. I'm a liar. <laughs> we we tried. Good, good yeah. effort. These will, these will be some interesting rocks. Um, before we take off. Nothing else. Well. I can poke all day, so like you got to stop me. <laughs> it really is surprising how. Yeah. Secure they are with the look of them. They look loose. Yeah. It is very surprising. Hmm. Did we try these up here? Yep. Might be just out of reach. Okay. Oh, nope. Just kidding. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Incredible, yeah. Okay, These well, we'll be thankful for the one we did get. Uh, oh, this one. How about oh. that one right at the very end? Did it move? Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's see how that works. Ooh. Any one of those three is fair game. But uh, I think the second one might have been a little bit bigger. But let's have let's a look at this one. Sure, I'll pull it out of the muck, and we can reassess later if we want. Go ahead, zoom. Yeah, we'll wait for the cloud to disappear for a moment. So as Kay. we're... Oh, go ahead, Trevor. More. Sorry, I was just going to say I'm doing this. Yep. Yeah, thank do you. Do you want to take this one then? I think this one... one uh, sorry, it? where are the lasers? Uh, come out a little bit there, Steve. Uh, this one is just barely 10 centimeters, maybe. Yeah, let's go ahead and put this one in A also. In A, roger. So but do you want me to mark this as a separate sample or same? Um, it doesn't hurt to give it another name, another number. Okay. Just so we can keep it consistent. All right. We're going to be 065. Roger that. And Lynette, you were asking about botryoidal texture. So if we were to zoom in on some of these rocks, like especially this one, you can see it really pronounced. Ooh. Um, it's that bumpy, yeah. lumpy texture. Ooh. Gotcha. Murky. Oh, I'm in punch mode here. Okay, arm secure. No more samples in this spot, no Niskins or nothing like that? No, thank you. Okay. We'll wait to get a rock sample for my project. Okie doke. So Are we good we to move it. along then? Yeah, let's go ahead and put it in a ship's move and start moving up this ridge, please. Okay, okay. front porch view, please. All right, bridge, nav.
Can we move five zero meters bearing zero three five, please? Thank you. And can we lose porch light? Oh, fine. Yeah, of course. You can do it. Okay. I mean, it doesn't look bad this right now if you want to keep it. No, I'm just bugging you. Uh, 0 0.2 knots. Thank you. So where we were sampling, we saw a stock crinoid. It looked like there might have been a small um, Stelasteridae, cryptothelia. It's kind of hard to tell. It looked like there was a tiny little white fan right next to that crinoid. So already two things that are not very common on the other dives. Zero three five. Zero three five bearing. Thank you. Yep. Well, wow, some of these pillow lava are like huge. Mm hmm Wow. Is the sort of, I guess, the sediment that it's all sort of packed into just other rocks that have just eroded over time down to the really fine scale? Or would it maybe be something else that's sort of uh, piecing it all together, the sort of sediment, the white stuff in between? Oh, the white stuff is just um, probably, well, it's probably a mixture of things, but mm -hmm. it's mostly stuff that's rained down from above. Mm. It's not in situ mm. material. You know when we see smooth rocks from current yeah. swooshing on by? That is actually removal of material, right? That's removing some of the rock bits? Um, or it's just, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking Like it's just scouring with the sandy sediment. So a lot of this, it, when we collect this white sediment, mm -hmm. it's actually very uh, angular. Um, okay. It's not a smooth clay. It's more like sand. Right. Um, and so it could just be scouring of that sand over the top. Right, okay. And that would be not marine snow. That would be from, from the rocks themselves, I guess. Potentially, or, I mean, a lot of these uh, seamounts have coral rubble on the top. Oh, when right, they used yeah. to be subaerial or, um, you know, uh, shallow coral reefs. And so a lot of that coral rubble then drifts down with gotcha. the currents. Speaking of corals... Yeah, we're finally oh. getting a couple. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Everybody's so entranced with the rocks. <laughs> <laughs> they're good rocks. They're really, they're beautiful. <laughs> we had a really good lesson from Val during dinner break, or right after dinner break, about pillows, lava pillows. Which of those light banks is the porch light? None of the above. Oh. Oh. Can we get a partial cool. zoom on these Thanks. corals while yeah, we're going Yeah, absolutely. Like Just working up to that right now. Yep. Anyone in particular there? Um, All of them? Yeah, just... 
Yeah, I'll start yeah. down the bottom right. I'll move up to the left. Exactly. That sounds great. All right, Steve, could you please zoom in on this maybe Paragorgia? Yeah, that's what it looks like. The yeah. one on the right. Well, we got a couple different things in there. Yep. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's all sorts like of small ones growing on the rocks, too. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the small ones. Several different types of Paragorgia, maybe also maybe some Hemichorallid. I think there was one more up here, oh. too. Yeah. I'm not sure about these white ones, white pens. Not uh, Pen is not the right word, sorry. I'm not sure what they are. That looks like right, a thanks, Chrysogorgia there, perhaps. The light pink one. This, what am I seeing here? Is this a sponge or what am I seeing? Go ahead, zoom there, please. That dark spot? Yeah. Is that a rock or an encrusting oh, sponge? Huh. Oh, Oh. Oh, look at that sponge. What is that? Oh, wow. And some little mushroom corals. It does look like a sponge. Yeah. Interesting color, though. Yeah, Very it almost looks like blends in a little bit. Camouflage. <laughs> ROV proof. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, I don't, and that what is, is a first for me. I don't think I've seen that sponge, so I don't yeah, know what it I is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. But luckily, we, we have photos. Chris on with us, so maybe he... <laughs> One of our scientists ashore who's an expert in sponges. I think there's another one right down here. Zoom in there. Oops, I came in way too fast. Um, Sorry. Oh, I see. Just above lasers. Wow. It's like an encrusting sponge. Yeah. So oh. Some wow. type of demo huh. sponge. Okay, thanks. Thank you. I'm going to start moving now. There's another. Yeah, they're all over. Yeah. A demi sponge. Heteropolypus is what we are learning from Chris. Hmm. Camo mid is quite beautiful right now. Got the sunset coming through the A frame. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's a great shot. Or I guess not sunset, just sun lowering. All right, so lots of Chrysogorgia in the field of view here, and it looks like some Hemichorales. Also, Chrysogorgia are these ones. Maybe also Primnoid here, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, it could be, yeah. Do you want a quick snap zoom on that? Yeah, that'd be great. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, so now we're getting a little bit more animal density than when we first landed. Do you want another ship move or hold off on that? Okay, thanks. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep doing a ship's move. We got a lot of ground to cover on this dive, so. Okay. Bridge nav. But nice diversity. We have diversity. another step, five zero meters, bearing zero three five. Yeah, and some things we haven't seen before. Yeah, I'm really interested in that gray sponge. I'm gonna have to look that up more closely later. Oh, thank you, Chris, for clarifying that I was calling the demo sponge the wrong thing. Can you zoom in, please? That's great, yeah. It uh, looks like Victor Gorgia there, I believe, the purple one. Cool. Victor Gorgias. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank With you. Some, some stars, great brittle stars. Brittle on stars, yeah. Nice sponge here. Ooh, got a stocked crinoid. If I can get or a bump no, that's down not here. a stocked crinoid. What is that? Can you come double wide, please, Steve? Double wide. All right, you can push in past the fluffy bit. Thank you. So the fluffy bit looks like another potential demo sponge, maybe. There's also, looks like there's something interesting on the back of this rock. You see that like Ooh, white line on the top? Good. Oh yeah. yeah. I wonder what that is. That looks like a coral. Okay, can I've you seen push in please? Yeah, we see it other places. I remember Spiral seeing this with Steve once before. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, where interesting. it just kind of makes this trail, but I don't remember what it's called. 
You got any more there, Steve? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh, and the closed ones look really cool, too. Some type of octocoral. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's gorgeous. I have to look through my notes here. All right, thanks. Come on. Yeah, maybe Pleurocorallium. Probably getting that wrong. There's just so many different types of corals. Mm -hmm. Mm, nice sponge coming up in the distance. Yeah, that previous sponge Chris Kelly is identifying as a Eurydidae. Yep. Conolasma. Conolasma. Let's make sure to get some good stills of this sponge here. Stoloniferans. Thank you, Steve, uh, Chris, for clarifying what we were looking at. The one that was oh, kind this of is a beautiful trailing one. across the rock. Sponge. I'm not sure what this is. So still some really fantastically broken open pillow lavas that these corals are attached to. <laughs> How's the current down here, Trevor? Totally fine, totally manageable. I don't know that it's zero, but it's not much. Oh, some really big fans off to our right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty good coral diversity here. Is that a giant yeah. star back there? Giant star. Oh, giant wow, star. yeah. Star. Gotta get a zoom on that, hopefully. Supernova. Ooh. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. <laughs> 10 centimeter center part. That's pretty good. Well, you could go ahead and zoom. I'm not going to get too much closer. Mm. Mm. Chonker. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that is a, yeah, hefty. Yeah, a 10 centimeter central disc there. That's huge. Wow. Yeah, okay, thanks. All right, looks like we're getting to a little rubbly area up as we're moving up the ridge. It's more of these stock stocked crinoids, yellow. There goes the sea star. Bye, brittle star. He just jumped off this sponge that we we're going to zoom in on in a sec. The wall chair. Oh, really? Go ahead, zoom. Yes, the brittle star at bottom left now is oh, just yeah. oh. bailed out. Yeah. You have oh. to watch the replay. Oh, did it like move? Jumped off. off of, oh, yeah. dang. That would have been cool to see. Oh, yeah, there they are. If you're watching Those online, you can. Lines. Go back a few seconds. Oh. Watch that again. Let's cross this one off your list. Crinoids that we're seeing pretty often are also sort of filter feeders, too? Yes. Ooh. Who is this? 
couple different things here. So there's a crinoid attached. I think this is a bamboo coral. Oh, wow, this one's pretty. Um, yeah, so you can see it's a bamboo coral from the bare part at the bottom. It looks like those rings. Oh. So. It's cool how it's attached on the far side of that little rift or whatever. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. just bending they kind of like whips, whips around, yeah. Yeah, It keeps awesome. growing. Is the white part predation? Uh, it could or be predation or it could just be age. Okay. Bridge nav. Can we have another move five zero meters bearing zero two zero, please? Thank you. So those stocked corals, Chris Kelly's chiming in, it's in the family Hyocrinidae. Stocked corals? That's the, the crinoids. Cri the crinoids, the, crinoids, yeah. the, the yellow, stocked crinoids. The yeah. yellow ones. Yeah, rather. What kind of bird is that? Bird? I believe that is the albatross fl oh. floating around. I'll put it up on channel three. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was that like, kind of me up for a I was like, that discovery has to get a highlight because <laughs> what? It's a bird. <laughs> what? Also, did you see this uh, brittle star jump just now? No. There's just too much wildlife <laughs> happening here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I have to like rewind. Go see that. Another one jumped. Yeah, right off the one, oh, the man. sponge right there. Oh. Trevor, you're getting all the cool stuff. <laughs> I need to pay attention. Is it because the RV is spooking it? Or? Yeah. Yeah, it senses some, I don't know, vibrations, something. And it's like, nope, see ya. Well, since Chris was commenting on these stock crinoids, we could just have a quick zoom ski on there. Yeah. Go ahead, yeah. Mm. This one's also got a brittle star on it. Yeah. Yeah. And would that be maybe the brittle stars are just trying to get higher up in the water column, or do they feed on crinoids? No, they're probably just trying to get in the water yeah. column. Beautiful animals. Mm -hmm. They're gorgeous. Okay. Nav, what's the um, lateral distance to waypoint two? Just a bit less than 500 meters. Okay, thank you. Yep. And just a reminder to our audience, uh, or news in case you don't know. So we're diving on a very steep western ridge of Solidae Seamount, where our intended dive track is going to bring us from about 2,000 meters up to about 1,300 um, over about a three kilometer transect. So this will be a relatively long dive compared to others in this expedition. It's expected to last about 22 hours. We've already used up about three of those. Was this location picked specifically for how steep it is, um, or other characteristics led to us choosing this uh, particular ridge area to explore or seamount? Um, we typically focus on ridge features just because those tend to be areas with higher and more dynamic currents. Mm -hmm. So animals sometimes favor them. 
um, why we chose the western one versus other ridges on this um, sometimes is just random. Mm. Just looks right. Yeah. What's the little gray thing? Is that more of that sponge? Can you go zoom in there, please? Yeah, I think it's more of that demo sponge. Oh, okay. Yeah, totally. Definitely the most botryoidal looking sponge <laughs> I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Great use of the vocab word. <laughs> So those crinoids, those yellow stalked crinoids that we're seeing, hyocrinidae, crinidae, sorry. Chris Kelly is letting me know that they are typically yellow with five fairly broad arms. So you yeah, got a little fish in the field of view yeah. here. Little mm -hmm. one. Yeah, you could try to zoom if you think we can get it. <laughs> can you try on porch light, please? Also, what's porch on that light. rock? Ooh, he doesn't like us. Oh. Does that rock one. look a little? That's sponge. Different. Oh, that's the sponge. Mm, it's a tiny fish compared to our oh, oh, nine oh bye. lasers. <laughs> Very steep. <laughs> We're climbing here. Yeah. Can we get a partial zoom on this? Yep. Go ahead. Looks like a sea pig. <gasps> oh, sea okay. cucumber. Whoa. Sea cucumber. Mm. Let's see if that's on our that's wish a list. Good one. No. Not. Oh, it's so. Oh, look at the. That's so cool. Inside. Wow. Yep. So you're seeing it's. Yeah. Basically, it's intestine. It's intestine. I was like, this looks uh, like some kind of a. It's moving. <laughs> oh my gosh. Digestive system. Wow. Yeah. Did you say we might be sampling this one? I don't know. I was just looking. It's not on our wish list. Roger. So we're just enjoying it. Right enjoying next to company. a. Paragorgia. Is that what that is? Um, oh, this is a pretty. Yeah, it looks like a. It looks like a maybe. It's oh, got all of its, its beautiful polyps shot. attracted. All right, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Wow. I love sea pigs. Me too. They're so neat. Oh, it's so see through. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Big star here. Oh. oh. These are some hardy stars around this area. I think we had an ID on the last one, and it does look similar. For the sea cucumber? No, That's for the star. The sea star. Oh, okay. Can we lose the porch light? Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, let me kill it. You ready for another ship move? Yeah. Okay. Yes, please. Bridge nav. Can we move another five zero meters bearing zero two zero, please? Thank you. So we're laid back pretty far. If we want to do sampling, if we see something, we'll to try to make it pretty snappy. You're laid back fine. pretty far. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's pretty. Is this a... Oh, interesting. What is this? Is this a primnoid? No. Maybe it was. 
nice looking rock. Whole ledge. Now it's getting late in some places around the world, so thanks for those who are still around, and you're welcome. People are just saying thanks for the footage. They appreciate broadcasting. You're welcome. Okay, thank you to... Uh one of our experts ashore, Chris Kelly, for clarifying that that taller pink coral that we just passed was not a primnoid, but a um, candelabra bamboo that we think has a new name. more info on that sea cucumber as well from our scientists ashore, Chris, Kelly, Cynalactida. Not sure quite on the species, but. And again, for any new viewers from home, if you are enchanted by these uh, deep sea animals and would like to learn more about their names and what they look like, Definitely recommend the oceanexplorer.noaa.gov website where you can find a benthic animal guide as one of their data products um, that's got a lot of example species photos. We're referencing many of those while we're out here. Got a pretty sp specific question here. Don't know if anyone knows the answer, but uh, someone's wondering: Has Nautilus, or anyone else, to anyone's knowledge, uh, explored the seamounts that are north of the bend in the Hawaiian archipelago, heading towards the Aleutian Trench? Just wondering if they've been dated through geologic sampling. Yeah, so that's the Emperor Seamount chain. Um, I don't know if Nautilus has dove on them, but others have. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe Amy Baco Taylor has done some studies of the different animal communities on some of those seamounts. Um, and there's definitely been geological sampling of the Emperor Seamount chain, so we know that it's older mm -hmm. than the Northwest Hawaiian Island chain. Great. Thanks for that question. That's interesting. Like every one of our dives has been so different. Mm -hmm. It feels it like really we're has. getting a lot of diversity, but it's fairly sparse right now. Yeah. It really seems like the stocked carnoids are the, the stars yeah. here. <laughs> Yeah, and it makes me wonder, too, if we were maybe missing some of these gray demo sponges because there was other things to look at on those other dives. Yeah, but and they blend in so well. Yeah, they do. It's the most rocking-looking animal I've ever seen. Can we get a partial zoom on this white stocked thing that we're passing over? I yeah, lost my pointer, sorry. Lost the pointer. There go ahead go. and zoom on this. that, please, Steve. Start at the base and move up. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, it's just a little sponge. <laughs> little, oh. little sponge. Oh. Like a little button at the top. Thank you. I wonder if it's this small because it's juvenile or if it's like fully, you know, grown. 
Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> Don't we all? This flow just goes on forever. It really does. Probably all the way to the top. All right, that sponge we were just zooming in on was part of the genus Rosellidae, Calophagus. Ah, uh, Calophagus. Fully grown. Fully grown. Thank wow. you, Chris. Cool. cool. little shrimpy thing in the Atlanta cam. And there's something purple. Oh, nice star here. let's oh. look at that star, please. Zoom in on the star, Ooh. please. Zoom in. Ooh. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. Love. Whoa. That's so brain. cool. Oh, it looks brainy. It's a brain star. Oh, wait. <laughs> this reminds me of Can we pause something. here for just a second? I want to double check if this is something we want. Kay. You want a bridge? Yeah. Stop? Yeah, bridge. Uh, sure. Bridge, nav. Can we hold position here, please? Thank you. So we do have to be quick about it because we're laid back. So yeah, you want a okay. sample? Come wide, please, Steve. Come on. OK, what are we looking for? I don't know the names of these things. I apologize. Well, uh, do, 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 do. Day. don't know. Wondering if it's a slime star and if it's one of the ones that we want. Maybe in the interest of time, I will get set up as though we want to sample it and Chris, we can always bail yep, out. Chris says we don't okay. need it. We're good. Don't need it, Roger. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Easy. You can stay here on the seafloor. See ya. <laughs> Still very <Wow>. cool. <laughs> yeah, really cool texture. Yeah, very yeah. cool texture. To get my other list up here so I can be a little faster on the draw. Someone's wondering what do you wish people view viewers would ask about more often? I think we usually get a good um, sort of group of questions from folks, but. I wish they'd ask that question more often. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to talk about? What do you. <laughs> My feelings. <laughs> yeah, ask me about my day. How are you feeling today, Ashton? <laughs> You've been a little quiet over there. <laughs> Did you get enough rest? I had a big afternoon nap. I'm doing great. <laughs> Good. Okay. So I was right. It was a slime star, but it was not on our wish list. Nice. Him and Aster. Yep. Somebody out in the world also just said him and Aster. Yeah, great. <laughs> Rocks and rocks and rocks. <laughs> Somebody just put in, how's your day been? <laughs> 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 Thank you for listening. We really appreciate it. <laughs> it's Actually, been a good day. Listening to us as well. It's amazing. The day's been great because you're here. Yeah, one. The sun came out and today. And the sun. Yeah, it was really warm. Uh, it was a cool see breeze. The smiles. Everybody would walk outside and just be like, "Yeah." I know the ocean was twinkling, Small just in the light. It was great. There. Well, this is a very depopulated area. What are the holes in the rock all about? Yeah, I've seen that on other dives. It's it's perplexing me. I don't know what it is. You want a quick perplexing zoom there, Steve? Let's get a perplexing zoom. How is this for perplexing? <laughs> oh, <I'm, laughs> I am perplexed. Ooh. Can you turn on uh, perplexing light, please? Yeah, perplexing light. That's a nice texture on those. For oh. sure. Ooh. Ooh. I, uh, Drama light. Utterly, Drama light. Utterly perplexed now. This is where they harvest bowling balls. It's <laughs> 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 really funny. <laughs> oh, that's 
<laughs> All right, you can kill perplexing light. <laughs> perplexing light dead. The great bowling ball mines of the North Pacific. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Uh, someone's wondering why do we collect sponge. things Hello. and what do we do with them once we collect said things? <laughs> Is that that same sponge? I think Just so. Just from a different angle? Yeah. Oh, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Uh, well, on this expedition, we are collecting things to help us age, rocks in particular, uh, age the ridge. Um, H to C mount, um, also collecting things uh, that help us understand animal biodiversity in these areas. Um, for microbial reasons, for Beth especially. This is like a little little nursery. They're trying to get started here. Lots mm -hmm. of little corals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What well, what might that mean to have Can an we look area at with what the younger ones? Is that just a shiny rock? What is that? This, I think it's a hole. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Now that I have the perspective better, I can see that that's what that is. Raj. Really big pillow basalts here. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Look wow. At that wow. 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 Look at this view. <laughs> this, is, yeah. this is. Oh, oh, this is. This is so a little cool. scary. I'm not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> but like in an exciting way. Like I'd still go down. Come back, come back to safety. Oh, this way. oh here we go. Great. Oh, I'm glad wow. I went over there because now we get to see more of this white wispy yeah, stuff. Yeah, so stoloniferans. Stoloniferans. And also, what are these hydroids on the uh, on the edge of the? Sorry, can you porch light? Potentially. Yeah, porch light. I will show and not tell. No. Oh. Oh. Yeah, can you those zoom in, please? look like hydroids. Yeah, all that stuff that looks like moss is not moss at all. Looks like there might be some barnacles here too. Oh, yeah. No moss. <laughs> 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 Alright, thank you. It's nice. You want porch light on still? No, I think this is off as good standard operating. Makes Steve happy. <laughs> Chris is remarking that you love this type of terrain, Trevor. Oh, do I ever? This is this is what I'm all about. <laughs> it's like the ROV version of off-roading. <laughs> totally. If I can give viewers vertigo, then I'm doing it right. <laughs> oh, who's this little go red shrimp? shrimp? Shrimp. Go shrimp, go. Bye. Somebody saying happy Easter weekend. Happy Easter, thanks. Oh, look then, at the center of this oh, wait, rock. I don't want to miss it. What yeah. else? <laughs> <laughs> this pillow Hold basalt on, or person. <laughs> too, much, too much exciting stuff. It's got a center hole. Yeah. I don't know. That excites me. <laughs> That's cool. Sorry to interrupt there. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. I had to pay. I was like, wait, I don't want to miss it. What is this? <laughs> Um, yes, okay, so they were just saying uh, what determines whether an area is as sparse, is sparsely inhabited versus um, whether it can support more life. And I think you were saying earlier, Beth, that sometimes if um, a place doesn't look like it's a really good uh, settling place, it might not be a lot of things, or if the current isn't right, it may not be enough food coming by, things like that. Yeah, there's all kinds of things that can determine that. So water conditions, current conditions, uh, how stable the surface is. Um, although interestingly here, we're seeing more things where mm -hmm. it looks rubblier yeah. than we see <laughs> on the spot that looks like it's just been sitting there since the day it was in place. <laughs> yeah. So it could also be something to do with the chemistry of the rock surfaces, how amenable they are to larva attaching. Hey, feel free to play around with Atalanta lights. Turn them off if you want and see if you can get a better looking shot. Yeah, let me see what I can do. That. It's kind of washed out. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. a little more dramatic. That's Thank you. That's yeah. nice. Ooh. Yay, nay. Too dark. I like that. 
Yeah, I think this great. is. I think this looks awesome. That's um, way. We've got I think you have. I think there may be one more back on. Critter. I want to get a partial zoom. Let me see. So just a shrimp. Others. You can play around with which one you want to turn on too. Partial zoom on yeah. what? That little shrimp like sure. object. Okay, Steve. Partial zoom on the shrimp, please. Shrimp like object. No, yep. Let's keep going. And it I is think. indeed definitely a shrimp. Confirmed. Shrimpy. It's just floating. I could watch oh, no, a no, shrimp all day. Bridge. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chris, Thank you. I see your note. We'll have try that. Um, Trevor, some of these white, smaller zero white meters docks, zero like this zero one, five, yeah. please. if we can get some partial zooms on those. Thank you. Yeah, what about see. a full-blown zoom? Yeah, sure. See if there are noids or something else. Okay, Steve, please, full-blown zoom. Full-blown. Cool. Can I hold full blown still? I don't know. Mm. Clearly not. Bonk. Oh, don't hit that coral. All right. Come wide, please. Come wide. I'm sure we'll see other ones, so we don't need to spend too much time on that. Do we have water temp right now? How cold is it down here? Oh, yeah, we do. do Two we? degrees Celsius. Yes. Oh, yeah, CTD. Oh. Thank you. I believe. Good call on the lights, Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the right one to have on? Is that what looks the best? I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, what do you think? I wasn't. There's also. I was, look, I was zooming. Um, there's yeah. this one, too. No. Too bright. Kind of helps us see around, but I like it's the too contrast, bright. yeah. Yeah, yeah I do it too. looks glowy almost. I'm going to go for a little yeah. more zoom. Much more magical. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pull back a little while okay, you that's zoom. too much. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> I got overly optimistic there. <laughs> What's this little nugget tucked in the rock here? Oh. Is it a sponge or a star? A wrinkled star? <laughs> All right. Could you zoom in on this thing, please? I'm going to get some barnacles. Oh. Whoa. 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 Wow. Yep. Good one. All right. Good guess, Steve. Yeah, I'm going to say great. Great call. I didn't know barnacles did that, but <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot how it was right. Oh, good ROV question. Somebody's wondering, does the ROV have equipment that keeps it a set distance above the floor, or is it the pilot's responsibility? There's another barnacle. Is that another barnacle? Another barnacle. Yeah. Another whole pile of barnacles. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it does, but it's off the back end. So as the slope changes, oh, that's a good anemone, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. We can check that out. Is that what you call the auto alt? Yeah, I'll come back to that question in a sec. Let's uh, zoom in on this guy, please. Oh, this is a cool one. It's, it's kind of like so big. I know, it's like it's just kind of big. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's it gorgeous. Like eye in the center. Yeah. yeah. It's looking at us. It's protecting its bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have this one. Let's Easter get decoration. On there. I was just about to say, like, look. Look at those lasers. Like wow, that's 20 centimeters easily without including oh, wow. the little arms. Yeah. That's. That's a big. It's a big one. <laughs> cool. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, question with auto. Yeah, we do have an auto altitude feature. It's a little bouncy, a little under damped but it is it exists and it's off the back of the vehicle so it keeps a constant altitude of the back of the vehicle so as we're going up slope as the slope changes the front of the vehicle would get um, closer or farther away depending on the steepness of the slope and of course it doesn't work if there's no bottom below us so on a very very steep cliff there's no bottom below the back of the vehicle so it doesn't work at all so anyway, we use it for specific circumstances. Can we zoom on this, please? Yeah. Marshall? Almost thought that was an octopus for a second. <gasps> but it's not. No, it's a sea star. Is it a sea star? Yeah. But generally, we're always in Ooh, manual. Big. Go ahead, zoom. Look it's at huge. That. Holy, wow. That's, we've seen Look. some really, like, big girthy yeah. sea stars down yeah. here. Mm -hmm. Thanks. What is a sea star's natural predator? 
Is this a joke or a trivia? Right, no, right. I know he set it up like a joke, oh, but it's actually a question. I really a thought that was a joke, actually. <laughs> no, I'm curious. I want to know if we're going to, if it points to bigger things coming along. <laughs> That's I don't question. know in the deep sea. I don't I, know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't have a corny answer for that. Something about like a black hole, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> There's some more barnacles off to our right. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Steve, you were right. It's a barnacle. It's a gooseneck barnacle in the family Scalpellidae. So is each one of those one barnacle or a cluster of three plus? Mm. Yeah, I think it's a cluster. Okay. You think they'd spread out? Got to stick together. Huh. Colonial. Maybe. Are we allowed to have snacks down here? Uh, yes, but we try to stay away from super crumbly things. Yeah, so no cake. No cake, no chips. Yeah, I mainly stick with chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing greasy, please. Yeah. <laughs> I got to clean this. <laughs> uh, a lot of the times it's candy. I think we passed around chocolates earlier. But when they say down there, we're not, we're we're not, not down, down there. there. <laughs> <laughs> we're on top of the ship. <laughs> We're actually on the highest deck on the ship. <laughs> we do kind of look like we just have the coolest setup ever in our mom's basement, though. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, you could think, yeah. <laughs> you could think we're in, in Hercules, you know, if you just tuned in and you're watching and you see a control van and you see this thing on the seafloor. Yeah. Yep. It's like life aquatic. We're just all inside. <laughs> <laughs> Do 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 do. <laughs> Interns don't get sidearms. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> are we zoomed out all the way? What's that? Are we zoomed out all the way? We are. Okay. Yeah, these are some of the, I think, the most dramatic pillow assaults we've seen on this expedition so far. Yeah, I would Look say. Look at that! Oh, 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 there it goes. Wow, it's like a picture Did hanging on a wall. Someone say big pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Speaking of big pillow, the pillow in my bunk is huge. But they're all really big. <laughs> what? Mine's I nice. feel like mine's is small. Yeah. Oh. Maybe we should switch. Well, I think it, it depends on I'll how take you your sleep, pillow. I think. Yeah, if you have a smaller pillow, I will trade anyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Somebody's wondering what are the next imaging upgrades you're looking forward to? Stereo, higher sensitivity. I don't know if that's a Stephen question or an RV question. Bridge now. I can speak a little bit to it. <laughs> Go ahead. It's m more of a wish list. We have list. another move, zero five, mm. sorry, five zero meters bearing zero one zero, please. Zero one zero, Thank you. Roger. Zero one zero. Not zero five meters. <laughs> Can you move point two meters? <laughs> Sixty-eight meter. What sixty? How many meter vessel? Anyway, uh, I'm I'm wishful. I'm hopeful that in the next several years we have an upgrade to the main HD camera. So the mm. limiting factor is mainly budget, but uh, there's a new camera just commercially released by Deep Sea Power and Light. In, they designed it in collaboration with Mbari, Monterey Bay, uh, Aquarium Mbari. Research Institute. Thank you. I couldn't get the letters right there. Uh, and they, that's the new version of this camera, basically. This camera that you're looking at today was designed in, and built in 2001. It's actually serial number 001. Wow. And uh, it's still it's top of the line then, clearly, because it still gives great imagery today. But it is 20 years old. 
So there's the new version has 4K and 4K three chip, and this is the extent of my knowledge on camera technology. <laughs> but it's it's the modern equivalent of this when this came out back in the day. I don't know if Steve, if you know anything about that specific camera. I do not. It's not the 4K camera that we've used, is it? Correct. It is not that one. No, this is a new three chip full size. Uh, proper broadcast camera. Sounds exciting. Very exciting. Very expensive. What's the ballpark figure? Uh, half a million. Whoo! Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot. Yeah. So yeah, budget's the main constraint. Yeah. The reason we don't have it right sitting on our lap today, but maybe one day we'll get there. Maybe we'll even find some fortunate donor who help mm -hmm. wants to <laughs> help us out. So viewers at home, if you have a cool half million kicking around, want to help us out, that'd be fine. These are like little mini corals. <laughs> Another one of those glass sponges, also in miniature. Where's that? Oh, right here. Mm. Yeah, Ooh. got a dead bamboo coral off to there. Rip. I can't even. Is that on the left? Is that a hold fast or the head? That is the. Hold. This is the head. Th oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it yeah. Is. yeah okay. okay. I see it now. Weird. Oh, yeah, that was a, well, what is a the red there, there in the corner? Oh, I don't know. Nope. The one that just, just went off, past off screen yeah. on the left? Yeah. Yeah. That one keeps going. Wow, that's a wow. Huge. What's this little white one down here? Which are here? you referring to? Like tucked under the rock? Yeah. I'm not quite sure. Can we do a zoom on that, please, Steve? I don't know if we've been seeing those. It's so tiny. It's so tiny. There's a lot under there. That's a Couple things. And there's like yeah, the red. A lot of things under there, tucked away. Okay, thank you. Someone said we should think about starting a Kickstarter to try to get the camera. Looks like someone is wondering when we might uh, take another sample. I'm not sure, um, Ben. <laughs> yeah, we've got a three-kilometer yeah. transect on this <laughs> Long dive, way to go. so we're being a little judicious on our sampling. Um, maybe trying to pick up rocks around our waypoints, which are about every 500 meters of um, lateral distance. Um, so we're only. A little over halfway between waypoint one and waypoint two from when we started the dive. It's uh, a little like being a kid in a candy store. Like you're just <laughs> like, I could pick that one up, I could pick this one up. So we kind of give ourselves an arbitrary uh, distance metric to try to spread it out over the seamount. Mm. 
Steve, could you zoom in I'll on this guy, please? In the yeah. That's a dead sponge. Yeah. I can't remember the name of it. It's the one that looks like vertebra. Yeah. I don't think we've seen these live on this dive yet, have we? No, we haven't. No. Dead sponge is called a phoread. Mm. Yeah, and the sampling strategy, I was referring mostly to rocks in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, for animals, we generally are only trying to sample things where it's like a new geographic record or something we're not sure about. Um, so that is kind of how we guide the biology sampling. And then the eDNA sampling, we generally try to fire those in areas with relatively high density of animals so that the eDNA can be tracked to what we're seeing. Got it. Well, the seafloor looks a little bit different here. Oh, yeah. Spread the snap. sheet light flow. Yeah, a little smoother. <laughs> Can we have another step five zero meters bearing zero one zero? Trevor, do you mind panning you. right and left just to see how large this sheet flow feature is? If it gets to be more pillowy over there. Nope. Just one big sheet. Yeah, as far as the eye can see. Yeah. Let's go the other way. Really fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, it uh it's big. Wow. Drop off S slopes are like tense. How many waypoints do we have on this, Beth, this dive that we have to get through? Eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah, nine total. Nine total. Thank you. Yep. We are approaching waypoint two. Okay. Still have another 250 meters to go to waypoint two. Trevor, somebody's wondering, is, uh, they are asking if you upgrade the camera to a true 4K, would you also need to upgrade the satellite transmission system? Oh, well, that's beyond my pay Yeah, grade. I was like, that sounds... How about you, Steve? <laughs> well, <laughs> possibly. But if we wanted to broadcast it in 4K, but we could always down convert it before it gets transmitted. Mm. So that we'd have rec we'd have the uh, 4K recordings on the ship, but not necessarily transmitted. And then mm -hmm. I think, you know, we could make highlights from that later. What Onshore, about post those. For the wish list, are, is um, infrastructure change to accommodate low Earth orbit satellites part of that conversation, right? Because wouldn't that also... Yeah, I think Justin was talking about that uh, being something that might happen in the future. Or that's something that's being tested. Maybe Dwight, maybe Dwight was talking about that during his presentation. Having two satellites instead of one. No, I think Dwight was talking about low orbit satellites. Okay. He, you oh, know, because he yeah. mentioned during his presentation comparing it yeah. to Starlink. Yeah. And oh and yeah. That, yeah. And it might. Be cheap which idea. would, yeah, give it. Which he was saying could give us up to like 200 megabits per second rather than 20 megabits per second. Even 20 is 20 is pretty fast. This year has been great. Yeah, yeah, ex absolutely. More than I get at home. Is it really? Yep. Wow.
DSL. Wild. Yeah. But it's enough to do one Zoom call. Right on, yeah. Can we get some partial zooms on these rocks over here? Yes, you betcha. Look at that book stack. That's cool. Oh, yeah. And oh, and uh, stand by there, Steve. Sorry. Stand by. And uh, a little closer first. Fish. Uh, fish. Okay, go ahead. Bubble cam fish. Those are too big to try to pick up. Little cave. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. But interesting. Thank you. You can. What could be wide. inside it? I know. <laughs> An Easter egg. We'll never know. <laughs> I think I understand what pill why why they're called pillows now. <laughs> I wonder if there are any good like videos on YouTube of the pillow basalts getting formed in like real time. If there's like, hmm. that would be cool to see. Yeah, there or there are some or an illustration or something. <laughs> um, I don't remember the name of the seamount, but. Underwater volcanic eruptions have been observed um, in the I Western Pacific. I thought Herc has seen some like pre-Nautilus days. This is well beyond, well before my time, but I thought I remember seeing that there was like either pillows falling down mm -hmm. or rocks floating or some some crazy thing that I can't really understand. I don't know. That's third-hand info at this point, so. <laughs> That is the thing though, right Beth? That when rocks come out and if they're full of gas, when they harden, then they'll float for a while before they get water intrusion? They can, if they're really, really gassy. Yeah. What a crazy concept. Mm, somebody's wondering, have you noticed any effects of climate change in the deep sea? Oh, that was a, well, not quite that as a topic of discussion. Yesterday, when we were looking at all of those bamboo corals that look kind of degraded, dead, um, you know, the white branches kind of broken off and talking about mm -hmm. if pH might be, uh, if the pH was too low and mm -hmm. was causing it to be a challenging for these corals. Um, but we also commented that we're not measuring pH right. here, so we can't really say one way or the other. Um, we have never, this is the first time at ROV <laughs> exploring the seafloor, so we're just now setting a baseline to understand what, what does live here right now. Um, so this is the challenge with understanding climate change impacts in the deep sea because so much of it is still left unexplored. So mm -hmm. we could be impacting it before we even understand what it naturally looks like and what its natural variability is. Right. I know it was mentioned yesterday that it's really hard to date corals. Is it also really hard to tell how long they've been dead? Hmm. Uh, oops, sorry, I thought I did that with my mic off. Um, dating sponges is really stars. difficult. Dating oh, sponges. corals is a little bit easier. Okay. Um, uh, Knowing how long they've been dead, that's a good question. I don't know. I would think that things would decay fairly slowly at this temperature and this depth. Yeah. Uh, but there may be isotopic ways to figure that out. I just don't know the answer. Okay. Oh, a little anemone. Yep. <laughs> 